Hello, this is Travis for Sliver Surfer One. Welcome to my channel. Today, what I'm going to be showing you is the cheapest way to do a macro rig on your mirrorless camera. Let me clear some of this away. Okay. So here, I have my Sony A6000. It's got a cheap 50 millimeter f2 lens on it, and it's a kit lens. From Pentax. Pentax makes very good, a very good kit lens. Uh, not many people get these ones because they are uh, there's a 1.7 that's a little bit uh, uh, just a little bit more expensive that you can get out there. And there's so many of them, but this one will do great for our purposes because for macro photography you don't need something that is very fast. Okay, so what I have here is uh, a PK Denex uh, adapter. You can see there attaches to the A6000 okay now there's a couple ways you can do macro with this setup okay the cheapest way uh, in my opinion is with a set of macro tubes okay you could go ahead and get yourself the macro tubes for the Pentax mount go between the Pentax uh, lens and the Pentax adapter but in the long run that's not the cheapest way to go the cheapest way to go is either go with the extension tubes that are made for your your mirrorless camera okay uh, don't buy the brand name ones because the brand name ones are very expensive and they don't do much else than, than what these do all there is is there's contacts that run through here on springs to here so you don't have to worry about buying a, a expensive Sony macro tube kit but even still you, you don't you could use this if you're going to do macro to your Sony kit lens so these ones are usually around $40 20 to $40 for a set uh, that have the contacts built in but we don't need those contacts built in for this lens okay for manual and I'm gonna I'd like to show you how to do it for manual lenses because uh, in my opinion they're the best for doing macro okay so we'll just put this aside these rings here this is a Sony to Sony macro cheap Chinese setup $10 you can get them on eBay. And what you want to do is you want to put it on your Sony camera. And then, here we go, you look for the dot here and line up the dot. Okay, the reason why you, you want to go with these ones rather than going with the Pentax ones here is because you'll have to buy a whole set of these for each system you want. And I have Nikon, uh, Minolta's and Canon lenses that I like to use. And you know, it's just the flavor of the day. If you wanna just invest in this style, you'll have to get one for every lens system that you put on, whereas with this, you only have to get the adapter, but you can keep it with the, the, the Sony. So now that you have your cheap macro setup, you're not done. Because of this extra length here, what happens is as you get further back the image that it produces gets larger and larger but as you're doing that think of it as like a piece of play-doh or bubble gum as you stretch it out you're going to get less and less material or in the case of the camera as you spread it out you're going to get less light so the lights the photons are are spread uh, more sparsely as it goes out so you're not going to get as much light through here as it, it falls off. Um, so what you need to do now is get yourself a flash, okay? And basically any flash will do. What I recommend though, if you are going to get a flash, get one that has different manual settings. Yeah, one to one, one half, one eighth, one sixty fourth, or whatever. This one is a Metz that I picked up at a thrift store and it's for a Canon. These are normally fairly expensive flashes and they're good flashes, but this one's for some reason ended up at a thrift store and it's for a Canon. I don't have Canon cameras. I don't 
it's, I don't think there's really any reasons why I don't have a Canon camera, but you know, this is so cheap. And I know since it's got a center pin and this has a center pin, it's gonna work manually anyways. So what we do is we slap that in the shoe there, push it in firmly and tighten it. Okay. Another good thing is you want a flash that can go back and forth and up and down. Let me just lay this sideways for you. And say you're taking a picture of this, right? It's gonna be this close to your lens. The flash, even at its widest, it's gonna go spread out like this. And it's not going to hit this. So what you need to do is get the light from here down to here. And if you remember, or if you've seen from my uh, previous videos, uh, some of my light diffusers that I've made, you can use something like this. You can go back, I'll, I'll put a, a link in the video. Well, you have this, this is my Pringles light uh, diffuser, and it works great for macro. Well, it's a macro diffuser. So what you do is you just put it on like that, and you have the light coming from behind, coming from the front. Um, you can even do this, turn it sideways and move it over to the side, which I prefer as well. I'll put it over to the side so the light comes in from the side uh, and above and you get uh, less uh, harsh shadows underneath um, the insects or whatever you're taking a picture of. So what you do is you just you turn on your camera, turn on your flash, make sure it's set manual, and we'll start at one half and we'll see how it does. And remember, for ma macro photography, you want to have your f stops at around f11, f16. Okay, so here we go. I'll just forward a bit okay now that looked a little bit bright so I will chimp it a little by going one eighth and see where that is close out my f-stops a little more Yeah, so yeah, it, you have to take a few shots to chimp it, and then once it's chimped, you can go shoot anywhere you want, just leave your settings where they are, and it'll look good because you're not changing your, your, your focal distance, because it's manual, you just use back and forth to change it, and let's see. So there you go, um, all set up now for macro photography. This is what I think is the cheapest and best way to do it. There's, there's one other way that's cheaper than this, but in the long run, I don't think it's cheaper if you want to do, do a whole bunch of uh, different lenses. And, and there are, there's one cheaper way than this, and if you would like to see that cheaper way, um, I can show you it. I don't use it very often because I prefer this this way and I also uh, like using regular macro lenses at times as well. This is the macro that I started off with because it is cheap and easy. Let's break down how the, how much this macro setup costs. You can get this on eBay. Generally you can get a Minolta standard or a Pentax standard or a Canon standard or a Nikon standard uh, f2 lens 50 millimeter for about 10 or 15 dollars you get your adapter from that manual lens to sony for about 10 dollars as well you get your macro rings sony uh, nex or sony e to sony nex or sony e for about 10 dollars so we got 10 10 15 
okay? And then you can get any kind of flash. I prefer one that rocks back and forth, but you can use any kind of flash as long as it's got the center pin on it. And as long as it's a good, like, uh, a good flash. You should test your shoe to see if it uh, has a voltage below 6 to 10 uh, volts. Tri it's a trigger voltage. Okay. So any flash, this one will cost me uh, $15. You can get other flashes uh, all over the place. Anywhere from like $1.99 to you know 20 or $30 on eBay or on Kijiji, Nikon or Canon or Pentax, Vivitar work, uh, Sunpack, all those ones you can get, find cheap versions of those. Okay, so that's let's say $15 for a cheap flash. You have 15, 30, 40, 50, so $50 to get yourself set up with a good enough macro setup.